Greetings comic lovers and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics, from reviews of comics new and old, to history, to anecdotes, to really wherever our whims take us. You know what can be one of the best parts of fandom? Can be? The community, and discovering new things because of them. Fandom can be at its best when people are sharing what they love, and it leads you to find something new, or new to you. That happened to me recently at the time of this recording. Here on this channel while reading the comments of our She-Hulk and Spider-Man Sue the Daily Bugle video. In that video, when Peter is called to the stand, a book by the name of Webs is brought up that is being sold for $29.95 on Amazon. I was appalled at the cavalier method that something that seemed like it would be so substantial to Peter's life was brought up. It felt like a first appearance. However, it was not. I was what the kids like to call wrong. I was informed that we had seen webs before, and actually quite nicely by most people. For those who weren't nice, you, you know who you were. So of course, I had to go to there. That's the great thing about having a wide demographic. You have people who have different areas of interest and different knowledge on different topics. I like to think that this channel replicates that experience, at least a little bit. Just hopping from thing to thing, that's still how I go through comics, not methodically, like from one to this. No, just like, I like that, I like that, I like this. I like that. I had to dive more into the history of a world where Peter has a published book of Spider-Man photographs. And then I wanted to share it with you, because I know that I'm not the only one who wasn't aware of this. I will also highlight, while yes, Slot used it as a reference, and yes, it sure did exist, I think that actually makes it a more misused callback. And of course, if you missed out on the She-Hulk and Spider-Man video, I will have a card and a link. For now, we need to go back to 1988, and I cover giving you all the spider back that you will ever need. Baby got back indeed. But before we get started, I'm sad. And if you're enjoying this content, you know what to do. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Join us on this comic book journey. If you're feeling so inclined and would like to support the channel, hit that join button. It's down there next to the subscribe button. It helps us produce more content, go on more whims, and you get access to some behind the scenes features and badges and emojis and the like. Help us grow. Unlike J. Jonah Jameson, who's just there to crush dreams, specifically Peter's. Get ready for webs. So the tale of webs stretches several issues. It begins in issue 304, written by David Michelinie, with art by Todd McFarlane, and it goes all the way through to issue 310 with the same creative team. It starts off as an A plot and slowly diminishes in importance along the ride. So like from A to B to C to a sentence by the end of it. Webs came out pretty quickly when it was first being released because it was during a period where The Amazing Spider-Man moved from monthly to bi-weekly and they announced it proudly on the covers. Now every two weeks. That's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of Spider-Man. By 310, we're back to the book being monthly. It starts off in the storyline called California Schemin. Get it? Instead of dreamin', it's schemin'. Yeah. We open right off on a giant shot of the book, Webs. Really? That's the font we're going with? Well, it was 1988. Okay. Spider-Man in action. Exclusive Daily Bugle photographs by Peter Parker. I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. So this book, Webs, has been put together by Jameson and the Bugle without Peter's knowledge or consent. And he's being consulted with a mock-up, basically not because they have to, but for them to flex that they don't need to include him in anything. Technically, legally, the Bugle can do this because according to the terms and conditions, the fine print in Peter's contract, the Bugle owns the publishing rights to the photos he gives them. Basically, he passes them over, he no longer owns them. Kind of like how Instagram owns all your photos and can use them as they see fit. It's true, look it up, don't be Peter. You should have read the fine print on the release forms you signed, Parker. We own your work, lock, stock, and negatives. But being of a naturally generous nature, I might authorize a gratitude fee of, say, a hundred dollars. I can't even. The pittance, the gall, why don't you just slap him? However, the publisher then steps in to smooth over the situation. Really, this is a tried and true business technique to trick you into thinking you're getting something or being appreciated when really you're being screwed over and taken advantage of. Potentially beyond the confines of anything you signed. Because you can still sue, even if you signed something. That just adds more red tape. It doesn't mean that you actually can't be engaged in the legal process. You can't sign away your rights to the legal process to which you are entitled. Anyway, enough of that. The publisher says that there's a way that people Peter can still make some money off of this. If he goes on a book tour endorsing the book, also, of course, as you can probably tell, this also aids Jameson and the publisher. Because by him going on the book tour and endorsing the book, it makes it all look on the up and up and would count against him if he were to sue, because people would be like, oh, but you went on the tour and got paid. Why didn't you say anything? Obviously, you didn't have a problem with it then. And then it would make him look like he had sour grapes and kind of poison the well against him. Obviously, the publisher does not articulate any of this. Instead, they say that if Peter goes on this book tour, he could get a flat rate of $25,000. Then they say they'll give him an extra thousand per appearance if he can get Spider-Man to show up. Peter was fresh 
freshly married to MJ at this point and was just about to go back to college. So the idea of that money is super appealing. Peter gets mad, not because he's being completely taken advantage of, but because they want to involve Spider-Man. He wants to do the book tour alone, so he proceeds to be angry about, in my opinion, completely the wrong thing. I know it's selfish, but I really don't want Spider-Man in on this. He goes on to think that Spidey always gets the attention, and he wants some attention as Peter for a change. Plus, traveling on someone else's town, being asked for my autograph? Wow, I may be ticked that I don't have much say in all of this, but when the bottom line is drawn, going into a store and seeing a book with my name on it would be a heck of a kick. I'm so upset on Peter's behalf. I kind of wish this had been played differently. There are a couple of angles that I think would have been a little stronger and you could still have accomplished the exact same story. One, play it like he's not fully aware that he's being taken advantage of. The wide-eyed, oh wow, golly gee, my name in a bookstore window and people seeing my name in lights. And then perhaps build up to a reveal that he's being taken advantage of. But by that point, there's nothing you can do about it. We can take that opening scene and put at the end and just be like, oh, legally he's screwed, kinda, sorta. Or he learns at the end that they made this big, huge mountain. He got a pittance. Or have him go on the book tour going along with it to learn the process so he can release his own book and get back at the bugle. Peter's smart and occasionally petty. It could work. The problem here is the status quo that we need to maintain. The plot needs to unfold in such a way that Peter didn't end up rich. Part of the relatability of Spider-Man is that his day-to-day -day life is pretty average most of the time. Introduce wealth and that doesn't always go over well. Peter goes home and tells MJ about this. She too is nowhere near as angry as I feel she should be and just wants to go on the book tour with him. He tells Aunt May he has a book coming out, but neglects to tell her any of the surrounding circumstances. In all fairness to this entire arc, the way the marriage is depicted between him and MJ is really sweet. MJ is shown to have her own strengths and interests, despite being involved in a getting kidnapped plot a few issues into this arc. But she saves herself. Can't just wait around for Peter all day. So this book tour ends up taking Peter to a pretty swanky event, mostly so it can coincide with the other plot of the Black Fox and the Prowler getting into it over loot, which of course ends up causing Peter to appear as Spider-Man at this event. So Spidey ends up being involved in the book tour even though Peter didn't want him there, leading to Peter being jealous of himself. MJ had some fun dresses this issue. Issue 305 continues the California scheme and plot of book tour, Black Fox, and now Prowler and clearing his wife's name. The book tour is shown to be a huge deal and Peter even goes on Johnny Carson. Three 306 begins the process of pushing the book tour into the background. We have a plot involving a villain called Humbug. We focus in on a creepy obsessed fan who's gonna kidnap MJ. And we also introduce a chameleon plot. And the black cat returns to town after having broken up with Spidey looking to rekindle things, not knowing that he's gotten married and moved. Yes, all that happened in one issue. Blink and you'll miss it. Also, Felicia's hair, why? What have they done to you? 307, the book tour is now being treated more comedically and it's starting to be referenced to as Peter's book. We're getting to the point where if you miss the start, you may not know how much Peter was taken advantage of. It comes across in later issues like, oh, he published a book and went on a book tour all of his own volition. There's no Jameson did this to him editor's note. Where's my editor's note? I'm gonna burn fan, Mr. Parkhurst. I read all your books. The chameleon looks particularly cool this issue. Looking suave. In this issue, MJ gets kidnapped by her creepy neighbor stalker who has a shrine room dedicated to her. You see? This is the kind of behavior I expect from someone with a shrine room. Take notes, Lois, it's not cute. 308, who kidnapped Mary Jane? There's something about this cover that is just goofy to me. Something about how the eyes are drawn on Taskmaster. MJ is missing and Peter is worried that someone has made the connection between him, Webs, and Spider-Man. He thinks his identity may be compromised. You see, this is a good use for the book Webs, but it's very brief. He takes the streets as Spider-Man. Meanwhile, MJ schemes with how to escape from her volatile, unstable, backhanding captor. The book tour is weaved into the plot here is a responsibility that Peter doesn't want to maintain, not while MJ is missing. But he ends up going to his scheduled appearance because Aunt May calls and is all, oh, I'm so excited, my nephew, a celebrity. And he doesn't tell her what's going on because he doesn't want to worry her yet. I'd be really mad if I was Aunt May, just out of the loop all the time, perpetually. Peter has a super random fight with Taskmaster and his school of villains he's training this issue. Why? I don't know, why not? Hey look, the gravestones in this shot are references to Spidey creators and writers, artists, etc. You know what that is though? Batting. 309, Peter is getting more and more desperate to find MJ. He's depressed as Peter and more violent as Spider-Man. Oh, and he goes to talk to Gloria Grant at the Bugle and while he's there, Jameson comes out and he's like, hey, do you have any work for me? I'd really like to work to take my mind off of things. Jameson kicks him out. But then he turns to Gloria and tells her to put all of the reporters in the city on high alert for finding Peter's wife. And it's supposed to be a, oh, he really does care moment. But no, he's still being a jerk. Peter needs some support and he just kicked him to the curb after taking advantage of him with this web book. He shouldn't be giving him any more photos. Why? So he can do it again? He can produce the sequel book? Spinners? It's fine though. MJ escapes herself and even helps Peter defeat the villains he was fighting to get to her. Leave him alone. Damn. 
MJ don't play. 310. At last, Peter goes back to college. Yes. At last. Hey look, it's totally not Batman. And by this issue, here's how we're talking about webs. While I made hefty bucks promoting webs, the book of my Spidey photos that was published this summer, a postgraduate program could last years. I've gotta dole out my grub steak very carefully. And from then on, a webs is just gonna be a bit of an afterthought and kind of fade into obscurity. Fun web facts. It was flipping through webs that triggered the clone Gwen Stacy's memories. Webs is also the name of an accessory for the Marvel superheroes game full of facts you can incorporate into your game campaign. It was also a sticker photo album from 1991. Peter is missing out on all them royalties. So yeah, webs, an event that really should have altered Peter's life more than it did, but was carefully crafted not to. And it's such a blip, it happens so quickly that it's easy to miss. And it's largely forgotten, especially because it's kind of hard to work it back into the plot in a way that makes sense. The idea of webs is very interesting, and there's something very real about how Peter was taken advantage of, and there was a lot of potential responses for him to have. Though in my opinion, misses out on some anger and also some extra money just by having Spider-Man appear every time. Like, if they're gonna use you like that, get that coin. Milk them for all they're worth. It's what they're doing to you. The way the story is treated is interesting too. It was fascinating being reminded just how much was going on in these classic Amazing Spider-Man issues. A lot of plots packed into not that many pages. Some interesting and some, why is this happening? Part of that format is what helped facilitate this story's ability to just fade into the background because you could just subtly shift plots around as needed. Things could go from the ape plot to the B plot to the C plot, from the foreground to the background and back again. But in the process, sometimes details could be lost or purposely left out. Like for example, exactly how much Peter was being used. Cause if we had Peter be too angry about this or take some serious action, it could inevitably upset the status quo because how would he work with Jameson again? How would you get over something like that? Why would you ever give more work to a man like that? Or if you got a huge settlement, why would he want to work with you? It's just questions. I mean, at the very absolute minimum, Peter should have had a lawyer go over his contract and look at it and make sure that that can't happen to him again. Use how much the book netted as leverage. Okay, let me take my hashtag justice for Peter's spirit and jump it forward to 2004 and our reference to webs. In issue four of our She-Hulk story, we encounter webs. And it really got me thinking once I went back and checked it out, because I'm sure I'm not the only person where this would be their first time hearing about webs. I know that while some people wouldn't go and look for it, others like me would. In this slot story, Pug asks Peter if he still gets royalties and Peter says yes. But when I went back to this arc, it was specifically stated that no, he wouldn't. He was cut out. He was getting a humiliating slap in the face, kick in the pants, lump sum from Jonah. And then he was getting this base amount of up to 25,000 for the book tour with those extra thousands for a Spider-Man appeared, which he didn't even have him do. Not all the time, by accident. It was one of those Peterisms, like, oh no, Spider-Man's encroaching on his life as Peter. So here's my thing. References and Easter eggs. Firstly, they are different things, but they're both cool. An Easter egg tends to just kind of sit there, whereas a reference tends to be more active, even if it's just a brief mention. So webs may have been a bit of a blip in Spider-Man's history, but in the She-Hulk story, it should have been a much bigger deal. If webs is known to exist, firstly, Peter really should have been on the list of witnesses. In this story, he wasn't, and was just magically added later mid-trial. But okay, he's there now. Why use webs like this? When he's asked if he gets royalties, it's the perfect time for him to say no. Now is Peter's time. And you can go with either reaction of the ones Peter sorta had. Anger at being taken advantage of, which makes Jonah look bad and reinforces the using Spidey for money angle, writing trash about him in the paper, then turning around and profiting off of a coffee table book of art photos after having made him infamous. Or you could have him express the other angle, that he was young and didn't really know any better, he needed the money, he was flattered about the idea that people would see his name on a book and didn't realize the long-lasting implications. But neither of those happen. Instead, Webbs is used against Peter to add him to the lawsuit, again magically in the middle of the trial. I contend that this was a poor use of the reference. For me, it reinforced the idea that this was just a look. I know lots of Spidey things. Look at all these references. Because there were a lot of references in this book that were just kind of there. Another instance of this is the Spidey Mobile. That one works better because it's like, ha ha, Spidey Mobile, but it's also another instance of it didn't need to be there. Even in a more comedic take on this story, this could have been a huge moment. If part of the jokes are gonna be about humiliating Jonah and making him look bad, why not use webs to do that too? Peter really should have realized that the fact that he worked the bugle as Peter Parker would mess up his case as Spider-Man. It does not take that much thought. Good comedy can work even if you have to think about it. The one thing I'm definitely glad of when it comes to this reference is that it led me to the web storyline and that you fine folks led me to the direct start of it. Webs isn't exactly an arc that's gonna get its own Marvel Essentials edition. Marvel sometimes collects its storylines that it considers to be very important into these essential editions rather than just omnibuses or collecting works based on author. It can be a bit confusing and lead to duplication and sometimes 
you have issues that are missing. There's a whole thing. Like for example, there's a She-Hulk written by John Byrne omnibus, but he only wrote 27 issues of over 60. So you're missing a lot of She-Hulk. I just want a complete omnibus. Give me things that are complete. Otherwise you end up paying for double. I see you. That's why you do it. So I have to buy both. I don't appreciate being taken advantage of. I'm not Peter. Webs is a really interesting idea, and if it's going to still exist, I would love to see more done with it. Or heck, wibbly wobbly continuity wooity, let's do it again. A modern, at the time of this recording, update. And if they already have and I missed it, point me to it, because I really am into this concept. It marries the realism with the superhero world in a way that I find fascinating. What did you think of Webs? Did you like how it was handled initially? Do you feel that it works with how Peter approaches situations? Now I'm just being being way too hard on it. Do you feel that the reference brought something to the 2004 story? Do you feel that it had to? Or again, do you feel I'm being too harsh? Be nice. Does $29.95 seem a bit low for a book like Webs? Share all of your thoughts down below. While you're down there, please do all the YouTube things. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so that you never miss a vid. Thanks so much for taking some time every day to spend it discussing comics with me. I always appreciate it, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.